Okay, uh, the session is being recorded now. Let me tell you, repeat something that um, I said uh, last week as well. This is regarding attending the meeting. Let me share my browser here. So I assume you can all see my browser window. What you should do is go to www.metrostate.edu and scroll all the way down and click on Zoom, this link. And once you click on it, you will get um, a sign-in screen. You should sign in here and then click on the meeting link. So I am asking all of you to do this uh, from next week onwards, not wait for me to admit you. The reason is I don't want uh, people who are not authorized to be here, who are not students of Metro State to be in this meeting. Otherwise I will have to admit anybody who is waiting in the waiting room. I said this last week too, but uh, there were about a dozen of you who did not um, do this. I am asking that from now on you log into Zoom and then um, click on the meeting link. Please do that. We have had a very bad experience in the department with uh, people being admitted to the meetings and people showing off uh, pornographic pictures and stuff like that. Not students here, but from people from some places. I mean, you don't want those kinds of things to be disturbing our meetings. So please, I'm asking you to follow this protocol. Okay. Now, um, that out of the way, let's um, get uh, started uh, with uh, my asking you if you have any questions on what we did last week. Do you have any questions? Would we ask questions about review questions now, or is that later? You can ask any any question now. Yeah. Okay. I think we should go over number twenty. Of twenty on. On the review question. Okay. Yeah, no, and no. I can share screen, or you can. I can. I will. Uh, I will show it to you. Perfect. So is your question on this particular problem? Can you see the screen? Taylor? Yes, I can see it. Uh, okay, is this uh, the amount that a customer pays for a product? Yep, I just wanted to be sure that I had the correct solution. Okay, um, I, I will, yeah, uh, can you tell me what you try to do? Yeah, for sure, give me one second yeah. here so I can pull it up. Yeah, just uh, read to me what you wrote and then. Yeah, I'm just trying to, because I think when it's screen share, uh, you like won't I be can't. able to do it at this point. Um, so uh, the pseudocode for this would be somewhat like this. Okay. Uh, see, let's uh, read this. The amount that a customer pays for a product is the advertised price less a discount, which is a percentage of the advertised price. For example, if the adver advertised price is $50 and the sale 
percentage is 10, the customer pays $45, 50 less, 10% of $50. Write pseudocode to read in the price of a product, the sale percentage, and then print out the price the customer pays. So we need so, to for this. So do you want me to, I mean, I can't obviously look at my document, but I think I recall. Yeah, so, you, can, you can look at your document. I will, uh, I, I want to say a few things about this. When you read a problem like this, the first thing you have to ask is, what is the input? So you have to divide your problem into uh, a couple of things. Um, hold on. Um, okay, so you need to decide what your input is, what your output is. And then you need to see how to get from the input to the output. So how do you find out the input? So you need to read the problem carefully. Here is a short description of what is um, what the setting is. It gives you an understanding of uh, advertised price and um, the price a person pays, etc. And here is a little bit of an example. You, the purpose of the example is to help you understand nothing more. So here is a little more. Um, a specific statement that tells you what should be achieved. So it is important to understand the different parts of a problem. Not all problems may be stated like this. So you should, you can see here that you have to write pseudocode. Then look at this phrase, read in. Anything that comes after reading that is related to reading would be input. So here I can write, read in the price of the product. Then the sale percentage. So that's it. Only a couple of things. It should print out the price the customer pays. So it is um, settled now what the input is and what the output is. Now, the third thing that you need to do is the processing. For that, you have to think. And for every part of it, actually, you have to think. But uh, getting the input is fairly straightforward in many problems because it would be written as something that you have to read in or um, ask the user and, and so on. And here you might see phrases like print out or write out or display, um, etc. Processing is more difficult because you have to see how to get the output from the input. For that, you resort to the description here. Once again, every problem would, would be presented in a different way. So th there is no standard way that a client would give you, would write a problem for you. You can't uh, ask for those kinds of things. So the amount that a customer pays is the advertised price less a discount. So here you have to also see some synonyms. The advertised price is the price of the product. Okay, so you should look, you should see that it is not going to be pre pure mathematics where everything is in terms of symbols and everything would be 100% consistent. That is not going to happen in this field. So you have to see that advertised price is the same as the price of a product and the discount is in percentage and uh, the amount the customer pays, price, uh, pays is the advertised price less a discount. So at least I can write that here. So the price of a product. So I'm going to write um, compute 
the price the customer pays equals the price of the product minus the sale percentage or the discount actually didn't actually the, the, the this should have been written the discount so i'm going to write the discount here minus the discount of course this is in percentage but i have to compute the dollar values if uh, the percentage is 10 and if the price of the product is 1000 you should not subtract 10 from 1000 you should be subtracting the corresponding dollar value so how do you compute the discount from the sale percentage uh, uh, based on the sale percentage and the or the discount percentage and the advertised price so that would be the advertised price times um, the discount percentage divided by 100. The reason is if your discount percentage is 10, that is for $100. For every $100, you are paying $10 less. That is the meaning of percentage. So you need to compute it for $1. For $1, it would be 10 divided by 100 because that 10 is for $100. So divide by 100 to get the rate for $1. Multiply by the advertised price, you will get the total discount. So discount equals this. So you have, now you can actually write the pseudocode. The pseudocode would be, you have to read in the price of a product. And you have to say where you are going to store it into price. Then you have to read in the discount percentage. into discount discount rate maybe the other one is getting too long discount rate i understand that that is in percentage okay so i'm going to just write discount rate with the understanding that it is expressed in percentage not per dollar so discount would be equal to price times discount rate divided by 100. And then you need to display or print um, the price the customer pays, which is equal to the price minus discount. You can write it like this, price minus discount, or you can actually, um, compute that before price paid equals price minus discount and you can simply write price paid and you can put all this between begin and end and then put this way. So that would be the pseudocode. You need to, Perfect. Thank you. you should never put things like, somebody asked me by email, you don't put things like $1.50 or something in the brackets here. No, you don't do that. Those are all examples. That is not what is going to happen in, 
that is not necessarily what is going to happen in real life you 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 can't say that it is going to be 50 dollars or 10% or anything of that kind that is why you are reading it because you don't know what the values are okay so it is essential that when you read the problem carefully and figure out what the inputs are what the outputs are and how to get from the input to the output without that there is absolutely no problem solving when you get a problem like this and you have to write a python program you just need to sit and spend some time understanding what is involved what the inputs are what the outputs are what the processing is and then write out the pseudo code then go to python and then type in the python code that is equivalent to this pseudo code if you don't take that approach you are going to be having a very miserable time unfortunately with programming if you rush to the computer and then start typing in things most of you will find it uh, formidable of course you can always start python you can always type in something but that is not going to be necessarily correct so please be patient spend some time understanding the problem understanding the uh, input output and processing involved uh, coming up with the pseudo code it will pay dividends yeah after a while uh, code like this would become very straightforward and you would have no problems uh, coming up with code for a problem like this but then you will get tougher problems for which again you will have to write some kind of pseudo code so um, as you gain more experience the problems that you saw 2 months ago would become fairly easy but then it will get uh, you will get harder and harder problems and for that we learn to again think that is why you keep developing the skills but if you don't do it the right way if you start developing bad habits now it will stay with you and you will not be very successful so please for your own sake for saving your own time and energy and to be successful please follow what i am suggesting if uh, there are many students who don't follow this uh, thing they think that they can they are more comfortable typing in something to the python but that doesn't mean that you are typing in the right thing because this is an all or nothing affair uh, programming either you get it right or you get it wrong you know there is nothing in between if there is nothing like a bad uh, you are not going to sell a bad program a program that doesn't work so i i am very serious when i say this please please do not rush to the computer and start typing in um, python code but once you get to some uh, stage like this you can write python code so let's see how to do that okay i still have a few more people waiting let's let me admit them and let me repeat this message about um, logging into zoom okay i'm repeating something uh, that i said at the beginning of this meeting and uh, something i said last week also uh, all of you please please uh, do me a favor do everybody a favor go to www.metrostate.edu before and then um, log into zoom and then only click on the meeting link because i don't want anybody who is not a student of metro state to be in this meeting okay we had a terrible experience with zoom in the spring semester when um, people from some place barged into the meetings they got they were admitted by the instructor and they started showing pornographic pictures in the middle of the meeting so we don't want those kinds of things to happen so i could you kindly go to metrostate.edu and log into zoom and then only click the link let me show you this once more 
let me show uh, give me a second um, yeah. mm. So you should uh, visit www.metrostate.edu and um, at the bottom of the screen, you can see a link to Zoom. So if you click on this link, you will get a login page uh, or you will get a page where, you, where one of the buttons is sign in and you click on that, you can log in to Zoom using your uh, star ID and password and then click on the meeting link. Then you will be automatically admitted because you are an authorized user of Zoom or, um, uh, or you belong to Metro State. Okay, so I'm um, asking that all of you do this next meeting onwards or if you have to step out of the meeting, sign into Zoom and then um, come in, okay? Please do that. Now, let me show you how to use IDLE. It was there in the video, but uh, let me show you how to um, create a program. In fact, we will use the same uh, code that we just wrote to write a complete Python program. So let's um, see how that is accomplished. So I have a Mac, some of you may have a Mac or some of you may have Windows. And what you should do is, if you have Windows, use the start button and then look for a Python folder and then you should see something like idle, integrated development and learning environment or something. Right? So I click on this and I get Python started. This is the shell. This is not where you type in uh, programs typically. You can write in simple code like this. Print hello. It will print hello. So you can try out Python code here, but that is not, uh, this is not the environment where you would write your programming assignments or create uh, programs for your labs. So for that, you should click the file menu and then do new file, just like you would create a document on Word. And here you can type in code. So let me do one thing. I, I'll uh, go ahead and um, let me go ahead and um, copy this pseudo code. This is what I want to convert to Python code. So I'm going to, I'm going to put three quotes here so that these are all comments. So if you put three quotes and end with three quotes and put anything in between, these are all ignored by the Python compiler, the Python system it simply treats this as documentation. It is meant for people like you and me to communicate our ideas with each other. So once you have this pseudocode, writing Python code is not all that hard. Let me show you one way of doing it, which is there in the assignment handout and also in the lab. So this is from the second assignment. If you look here, this tells you how to come up with Python code for corresponding pseudocode. So if I have a, I have pseudocode like Actually, I didn't copy the pseudocode here. So let me, um, actually the pseudocode should have been read in um, 
input i didn't have the pseudo code for reading in so input the price of a product or maybe i i did i don't remember now um, oh actually i had the pseudo code here i did that is not what i copied so let me go ahead and copy the pseudo code sorry about that confusion so so this is my pseudo code right um, you can use a format to indent stuff if you want so if you had a statement like read in the price of the product into price so pseudo code is similar to this the corresponding python code is here i have given it in the form of a small table so input an integer into x you should write put x on the left hand side and then put equals and since you are reading in um, the price uh, int is not the right approach actually input a number with a decimal point price would normally have a decimal point so you should use float so this is the right kind of statement of course you don't have x here you have price so you should write price equals then float input and then in quotes you write a de re description uh, the price of the product so i'm going to write enter the price of the product so that is my first statement you have this table here and it makes it a lot easier to write your Board. then read in the discount percentage into discount rate again a discount percentage could have decimal points so i should again use something like this so i'm going to copy and paste this and make adjustments that is a lot easier for me than typing in things again discount rate equals enter the discount rate for the product so i am done with uh, two of the statements now if you have something like set x to a plus b or set x to a star b those kinds of things it is even easier to write you just write x equals a plus b or x equals a star b in fact i wrote it like this so i didn't use set or i didn't use the word to so this can more or less be copied and pasted Well, the only thing is i don't have the right cases so discount i would like to be in lower case that is the normal convention price is the same i have price here i am using price i am using discount rate here i am using discount rate so everything looks fine at this point now i have to print the price paid for that i would use this translation table if i have to print a couple of few things i would put them in parentheses separate them separate them by commas so i can print price paid of course um, this will simply produce a number and i don't want that i would like it to be more informative so uh, the price the customer pays is and then end the code so that this will be printed exactly as given here then um, the next thing to print is the price paid so i have a comma here everything has to be separated by a single comma and python will introduce a space on its own which is good for you now you need to save this in fact i should have saved it even before so that um, i didn't have any unpleasant experiences so i am going to save this in a reasonable place
I will call it L2, L2 example. Notice that this is saved with the same name that I gave, but with an extension of PY. Now I can uh, run this program. I could uh, take a quick look to see whether there is anything uh, that uh, is evident to me to be wrong. I can't see anything. So let me go ahead and uh, run it. And let me type in 50.0 for the price of the product, 10.0 for the discount rate. And, uh, or I, yeah, I, actually I have, I shouldn't have written 10.5 because it is more difficult for me to compute the discount value. I'll have to use Excel or, or I'll use a calculator. So let me use um, simpler numbers, 50.0 for the price. So I typed in wrong anyway. 10.0 for the, so it, it, the 5.09 would be the, um, I, I'm not sure about this either. So let me go ahead and run this once more because I need to verify whether this is coming out right. 10.0, yeah, this looks right because 10% uh, of 50 is five. So the customer pays $45 after 50. So the things work out fine for me. Um, so you should actually have the test data also created before you start writing your program so that you can test your program using the test data. The test data should be exhaustive, but it shouldn't be compli too complicated that you can't even verify whether the answers are right. So there is a trade-off. Any uh, questions before we start the class exercises? The second assignment. Uh, do we have to download the Python and the IDLE program for this? Yes, yes, you have to download that. Oh, um, so we yeah. use the It will take probably five minutes for you to download it and install it. So well, for Windows, is it free? Sorry? For Windows, is it free? I'm avoiding with the last word. For Windows? Uh, for Windows, is the Python program free? Yes, it is free. For, it, it is completely free for Windows okay. as well as Mac. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do that right now. You will need to use it in your lab, not in the class exercise. Any other questions? I'm going to stop. Uh, um, asking. Yeah. I have an iPad and I was wondering. Um, can I download Python on it? I don't. Or is it only for I, Windows and Apple? I don't know I'm that curious. it's available for uh, iPad. Yeah. Okay, I, thank I, you. This is, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, uh, the, um, yeah, I don't know that, uh, the answer for that. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, stop recording and I'm going to call out uh, the names. So let me go ahead and st I'm st I will make the recording available to you later.